Chapter 1, Wardrobe Essentials When it comes to fashion, there are some things that are timeless. These are the pieces that make up the basics of any wardrobe. These basics are the wardrobe essentials, the things you can count on for nearly any occasion. They are versatile, classic, and comfortable. At the top of the list of wardrobe essentials is the white t-shirt. It can be worn with anything dressed up or down. Pair it with a skirt for a night out or wear it with jeans for a casual weekend look. It's the foundation of any great outfit. Speaking of jeans, classic jeans are another must-have. A good pair of jeans can last for years and never go out of style. They are perfect for everyday wear and look great with just a t-shirt. Add some heels and a blazer and you're ready for a night out on the town. A black blazer is also essential. It's a versatile piece that can be worn for work or play. Wear it with a blouse and pants for the office or pair it with a little black dress for a night out. A black blazer adds sophistication and style to any outfit. And speaking of a little black dress, that's another item that should be in every wardrobe. It's perfect for a cocktail party or a night out on the town. Dress it up with some heels and jewelry or keep it simple with flats and a scarf. A little black dress is always in style and always appropriate. These basics are the building blocks of any great wardrobe. They are the items that can be mixed and matched with other pieces to create countless outfits. In fact, investing in wardrobe essentials like these can actually save you money in the long run. When you have a few key pieces that can be worn in a variety of different ways, you don't need to buy as many clothes. When you're shopping for basics, make sure to choose high-quality pieces that will last. Look for classic styles that won't go out of fashion and colors that will work with different outfits. And don't forget to accessorize. A scarf, statement necklace, or a pair of fun earrings can add personality to any outfit. While it can be tempting to follow every fashion trend that comes along, building a wardrobe around these essentials will ensure that you always have something to wear, no matter what the occasion. Stick to these classics and you'll always be in style, no matter what decade you're in. Question, what are the must-haves in a basic wardrobe? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 2, Fashion Trends Fashion Trends, the fashion world, was always changing, and Sally loved to keep up with the latest fashion trends. She spent most of her free time browsing fashion magazines and following fashion bloggers on social media. Lately, the oversized clothing trend caught Sally's attention. She saw many influencers wearing these loose-fitting outfits, which gave a comfortable yet stylish look. She decided to give it a try and bought an oversized sweatshirt in a bold, bright color. As Sally headed to school, she noticed that many of her classmates were wearing oversized clothing as well. Some wore baggy hoodies, while others rocked oversized t-shirts and shorts. Sally was happy to see that she was not alone in embracing this trend. Old colors were also in right now, and Sally loved to mix and match several vibrant shades. She wore her oversized sweatshirt with bright green shorts and neon yellow sneakers. She even painted her nails with a bold purple shade that matched her hair scrunchie. As Sally entered the classroom, her friend Jessica noticed her outfit and complimented her on her style. She also mentioned a new trend that she had seen recently statement sleeves. Jessica showed Sally a picture of a blouse with dramatic sleeves that added a touch of elegance to any outfit. Sally was intrigued by this trend and decided to try it out. She found a gorgeous shirt with statement sleeves decorated with ribbons and lace. She paired it with her favorite high-waisted jeans and stylish ankle boots. She also added a gold chain necklace and some hoop earrings to complete the look. When Sally entered the classroom wearing her new outfit, her classmates couldn't stop complimenting her on her stunning outfit. 
They were fascinated by the statement sleeves, which added a unique touch to her outfit. Sally enjoyed exploring the latest fashion trends and experimenting with different clothing styles. She realized that fashion trends were always evolving, but one thing remained constant, the importance of feeling comfortable and confident in your own skin. As Sally left school at the end of the day, she felt happy and content with her unique sense of style. She was excited to see what new fashion trends she would discover next and was looking forward to sharing her new fashion finds with her friends. Question, what are the current fashion trends? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 3, Dressing for Your Body Type It was prom season, and Mia couldn't be more excited. Prom was not just a high school party, but it was also a fashion show where everyone flaunted their best looks. However, Mia was a bit nervous because she never knew how to dress for her body type. Mia had a pear-shaped body, meaning her hips were wider than her shoulders. She always struggled to find flattering clothes that accentuated her curves and created a balanced look. Mia didn't want to just cover up her lower body and hide her figure behind oversized clothes. She wanted to embrace her body and feel comfortable in her skin. One day, Mia stumbled across an article about dressing for your body type. She learned that the key to dressing beautifully was to understand your body type and wear clothes that flattered it. And that's just what Mia needed to feel beautiful and confident in her own skin. The article went on to explain that the key to dressing for a pear-shaped body was to accentuate the upper body by creating a balance with the lower body. Mia learned that wearing tops with ruffles or frills around the chest area would create the illusion of a broader shoulder. Additionally, wearing blouses with a v-neck would elongate the upper body and add a few inches to her height. Mia was grateful for this newfound knowledge, and she immediately started her search for flattering prom dresses. She visited several stores, trying out different dresses until she found the perfect one that met her requirements. The dress was an off-shoulder mermaid gown that fit perfectly to her curves. It had a lace bodice and a silky skirt that flared out at her knees. The dress had a beautiful jewel-encrusted belt that gave her a flattering waistline and a long train that added drama to her look. On the night of the prom, Mia felt like a princess. She had styled her hair in a loose bun, accessorized with pearl earrings, and wore a pair of silver heels that glimmered with each step. Her makeup was natural, with a bold lip color that perfectly matched her gown. As soon as Mia entered the hall, she could feel everyone's eyes on her. She walked with confidence, feeling beautiful and proud of her body. She learned the importance of dressing for her body type, and it had given her the sense of security and self-love that she needed. Throughout the night, Mia danced with her friends, feeling carefree and stylish in her dress. She could feel the elegant swish of her skirt as she moved, and the way it flowed around her made her feel even more confident. As the night came to a close, Mia knew that she'd never forget this special night. In the end, Mia realized that dressing for your body type is not just about looking good, but it's also about feeling confident and comfortable. She embraced her curves, and with the perfect dress that accentuated her body, she felt like she could conquer the world. Question, how can you dress to flatter your body type? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 4, Accessories Accessories were always the key to completing any outfit, and Jenna knew that well. She believed that scarves, jewelry, hats, and other accessories added a pop of color and a stylish statement to any look. Every morning, Jenna would spend a few extra minutes picking out her favorite accessories for the day. Jenna's favorite accessory was her collection of scarves. She had a scarf for every occasion, from cozy winter knits to light summer scarves. She loved experimenting with different ways of tying them, creating unique twists and knots that no one else had seen before. 
Jenna believed that a scarf could transform a dull outfit into a stylish and chic ensemble. Jenna's other love was jewelry. She believed that the right piece of jewelry could take an outfit from ordinary to extraordinary. She had an extensive collection of necklaces, bracelets, and earrings, but her favorite piece was a pair of gold hoop earrings. She'd wear them with anything, from casual jeans and a t-shirt to a fancy dress for a night out. Hats were another accessory that Jenna loved experimenting with. She believed they could add a touch of sophistication to any look. Jenna had an assortment of hats, including berets, fedoras, and wide-brim sun hats. She always picked one that complemented her outfit and added an extra layer of style. Jenna believed that the right hat could make anyone stand out in a crowd. Jenna loved the idea of adding a pop of color to any outfit, and she believed that accessories were the best way to do this. Whenever she wore an all-black outfit, she would add a colorful scarf or a pair of bright earrings to liven things up. She believed that a pop of color could change the entire attitude of an outfit, turning a dull look into a showstopper. Jenna's friends loved her sense of style, and they always sought her advice when it came to accessorizing. Jenna would spend hours with her friends, helping them pick out the right accessory to complete their outfits. She wanted everyone to feel stylish and confident in their outfits, just like she did. As Jenna walked down the street, her favorite accessories added an extra layer of confidence to her outfit. Her scarf gave her warmth, her hat added an element of intrigue, and her earrings brought out the sparkle in her eyes. Jenna believed that accessories were not just add-ons, but they were a way to express oneself without saying a word. In conclusion, Jenna's love for accessories was more than just about looking stylish. It was a way for her to showcase her individuality, to make a statement, and to feel confident in her skin. Accessories gave her the freedom to express herself, and she believed that everyone should have the opportunity to do so. For Jenna, accessories were not just a way to complete an outfit, but they were an essential part of life itself. Question, what accessories can spice up your outfit? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 5, Shoes Shoes were Annie's obsession. Nothing made her happier than slipping into a stylish pair of sneakers, flat shoes, heels or boots. She loved how shoes could change the entire tone of an outfit, making it more casual or formal depending on the occasion. For Annie, shoes were not just a necessity, but a statement of her personality. Annie's obsession with shoes began when she was a teenager. She would spend hours browsing shoe stores, admiring the latest designs and trends. She loved experimenting with different styles, from casual flats to elegant heels. Annie loved how shoes could be versatile, dressed up or dressed down, depending on the outfit. Whenever Annie had a special occasion, she would go all out with her footwear. She had a collection of stunning heels, each pair more beautiful than the last. She loved how heels added height, elegance, and a touch of glamour to any outfit. For Annie, there was no such thing as a dress that didn't go with heels. But on casual days, Annie would prefer flat shoes or sneakers. She loved how comfortable and easy-going they were, perfect for running errands around town or hitting the gym. She had a collection of sleek sneakers that matched with all her outfits, from jeans and hoodies to dresses and skirts. Annie believed that shoes could reveal many things about a person's personality. She always noticed people's footwear as they walked by. She loved seeing the diverse styles people wore, the way they paired sneakers with dresses, the way they dressed up sneakers with a dressy outfit. For Annie, shoes were not just a fashion statement, but a way to express oneself. One day, Annie had an important job interview. She wanted to look professional and polished, so she opted for a pair of elegant black heels. She paired them with a classic pencil skirt and a crisp white blouse. As she walked into the interview room, 
she felt confident and powerful. Her heels clicked on the floor, adding to her momentum. A few weeks later, Annie had a casual lunch date with her friends. She didn't want to overdo it, so she slipped into her favorite pair of turquoise flat shoes. They matched perfectly with her denim shorts and a floral blouse. Her friends admired her shoes, and she felt comfortable and relaxed throughout the entire afternoon. For Annie, shoes were not just a form of footwear but a way of life. They were a symbol of personality, expression, and confidence. No matter what the occasion, Annie knew she could always rely on her shoes to make a statement. They were the final touch, the essential accessory that completed her look. Question, what types of shoes are suitable for different occasions? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 6, Colors As Emma stood in front of her closet, she couldn't help but feel overwhelmed by all the colors. She had read numerous articles on how to dress for her skin tone and undertone, but it was still a challenge for her to figure out which colors suited her the best. She had always been drawn to cool tones, but sometimes they made her look washed out. On the other hand, warm tones seemed to bring out the redness in her skin. Emma decided to experiment with a few different colors and styles. She started by trying on a bold fuchsia dress that she had been eyeing for weeks. She knew it was a risky choice since fuchsia was not typically recommended for cool skin tones, but she loved the way the color popped against her pale skin. The dress had a fitted silhouette that hugged her curves in all the right places, giving her an added boost of confidence. Next, she tried on a mustard yellow blouse paired with dark denim. Yellow was usually recommended for warm skin tones, but Emma was curious to see how it would look on her. The color really brought out the golden undertones in her skin, making her complexion look radiant. The blouse had a loose, flowy fit that added a touch of femininity to the outfit. For her final look, Emma went back to her comfort zone and tried on a light blue sweater with black skinny jeans. Blue was a cool tone that she knew looked great on her, and the sweater had a cozy, relaxed vibe that felt perfect for a casual day out with friends. As Emma examined herself in the mirror, she took note of the subtle differences between each outfit. The fuchsia dress made her stand out, the yellow blouse made her glow, and the blue sweater made her feel comfortable. Each outfit had its own unique color story that reflected a different aspect of her style and personality. Feeling more confident and empowered than ever before, Emma decided to incorporate more color into her wardrobe. She began to experiment with different shades of green, purple, and orange, each one bringing out a new dimension of her skin tone and undertone. Emma realized that there was no right or wrong way to dress for her skin tone and undertone. Instead, it was about finding the colors and styles that made her feel the most confident and beautiful. With every new outfit and every new color, she was discovering more about herself and her unique fashion sense. As Emma closed her closet for the night, she couldn't help but smile. She had come a long way from being unsure about which colors to wear to embracing the full spectrum of hues and shades. Colors no longer intimidated her. They were now a source of inspiration and creativity, a way to express herself through fashion. From now on, she would continue to experiment, try new things, and step out of her comfort zone, all in the name of discovering the perfect color story for her personal style. Question. How can you choose the right colors for your skin tone and style? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 7, Mixing and Matching Sophie stood in front of her closet, staring at the array of different patterns and textures before her. She had always been drawn to unique outfits that stood out, but sometimes struggled with mixing and matching different pieces to create a cohesive look. Today, she was determined to take on the challenge and create a statement outfit that showcased her personal style. Sophie decided to start with a neutral base, 
opting for a beige midi skirt and white blouse. To add a pop of color, she grabbed a vibrant, flowy scarf that brought out the flecks of green in her eyes. The scarf was a bold statement piece that Sophie rarely wore, but she felt confident that today was the day to showcase it. Next, Sophie scanned her closet for a patterned piece that would complement the scarf. After a few minutes of browsing, she found a black and white striped blazer that caught her eye. It was a bold pattern, but she felt confident that it could complement the scarf without clashing. Sophie slipped on the blazer and admired herself in the mirror. The different patterns and textures worked surprisingly well together, creating a unique outfit that showcased her personal style. However, one final touch was still missing. Scanning her accessories, Sophie decided to add a pair of hoop earrings that brought out the gold flecks in her scarf. The earrings were simple, but added a touch of glamour to the outfit. Sophie couldn't believe how easy it was to mix and match patterns and textures to create a unique outfit that showcased her individuality. She had always been worried about clashing or looking too busy, but today had proved that with a keen eye and a bit of confidence, anything was possible. As Sophie stepped out of her apartment, she couldn't help but notice the admiring glances from people on the street. Her outfit turned heads and garnered compliments from strangers, boosting her self-confidence and making her feel like a fashion icon. Sophie had learned an important lesson that day. Mixing and matching patterns and textures was a fun and creative way to showcase her personal style. It was about experimenting with different pieces and finding a balance that worked for her. Today, she had succeeded in creating a unique outfit that turned heads and made her feel confident and beautiful. From now on, she would embrace mixing and matching different pieces, confident in her ability to create truly unique and stylish looks. Question, how can you mix and match different patterns and textures? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 8, Occasion Wear Anna had always struggled with finding the right occasion where. It seemed like whenever she had a wedding or formal event to attend, she would spend hours searching for the perfect outfit to wear. Meanwhile, casual gatherings and relaxed outfits came easily to her. But today was different. She had received an invitation to a cocktail event, which required semi-formal attire. Anna knew this was her chance to find a new dress that could work for both formal and semi-formal occasions. She set out to browse the stores, determined to find the perfect dress. After trying on several different styles, she found a beautiful deep blue number that fit like a glove. The chiffon material flowed to her ankles, and the dress had a classic look that she adored. It was perfect for a wedding or formal event, yet could easily be dressed down for a cocktail party. Anna left the store with a newfound sense of confidence. For once, she felt prepared to attend an event without stressing about her outfit. However, as the day of the event approached, Anna began to feel unsure about her dress choice. What if it wasn't formal enough for the event? What if everyone else was wearing cocktail dresses? Despite her doubts, Anna wore her dress confidently. As she arrived at the event, she realized her worries were unfounded. Some of the guests were dressed in formal attire, while others had opted for more casual outfits. Her semi-formal dress was the perfect balance, and she felt comfortable and stylish. Throughout the night, Anna received compliments on her dress and felt more and more confident. As she talked with other guests, she realized that everyone had their own approach to occasion wear. Some people preferred to stick with traditional formal attire, while others liked to mix things up with more casual outfits. The key, she realized, was to find what made you feel confident and comfortable. Anna left the party feeling empowered. She had found a dress that could be worn to a variety of events, and had gained a new perspective on occasion where it wasn't about fitting into a specific mold or following strict dress codes. 
It was about finding your own style and approach to different events, whether it be a wedding, a cocktail party, or a casual gathering. From that day on, Anna no longer dreaded formal events or occasions that required semi-formal attire. She had a newfound appreciation for the versatility of her dress and for the freedom that came with exploring different styles. Whether it be a formal occasion or a more relaxed gathering, Anna knew she could find an outfit that made her feel confident and stylish. Question, what should you wear for different occasions? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 9. Sustainable Fashion the environment had been a topic that had always interested Olivia. She tried to do her part by recycling and reducing her waste, and she was excited to learn more about sustainable fashion. She had read about the negative impact the industry had on the environment, and she was determined to make a change. Olivia decided to start by doing her own research. She spent hours reading articles and watching documentaries about ethical production and sustainable fashion. The more she learned, the more passionate she became about the cause. She decided to make a change in her own shopping habits. Olivia began by shopping secondhand. She found a local consignment store and was surprised at the quality of the items she found. She was able to find gently used pieces that were still in great condition for a fraction of the cost of new clothes. Not only was she reducing waste, but she was also able to support a local business. She also started to pay more attention to the materials clothes were made from. She looked for pieces made from natural fibers like cotton, linen, and silk. Not only were these materials better for the environment, but they also felt better on her skin. Olivia slowly began to build a new wardrobe made up of quality pieces that she knew would last for years. She realized that investing in a few well-made items was a smarter choice than buying cheap clothes that would only last a few wears. As she continued down the path of sustainable fashion, Olivia realized that she had a responsibility to spread awareness about the cause. She started to talk to friends and family about the importance of ethical production and sustainable fashion. She even started a blog where she shared tips and tricks for others looking to make the change. Olivia knew that changing the fashion industry would take time, but she was determined to make a difference. She was excited to see that more and more companies were starting to prioritize sustainability. It was a small step in the right direction but it gave her hope for the future. As Olivia looked in her closet, she was proud of the progress she had made. She no longer saw a collection of fast fashion pieces that had a negative impact on the environment. Instead, she saw a carefully curated collection of sustainable and ethical pieces that made her feel good both inside and out. Olivia knew that she was just one person but she also knew that small actions could make a big impact. She was excited to see where her journey towards sustainable fashion would take her, and she was determined to inspire others to make the change too. Question. Why should you care about sustainable fashion, and how can you incorporate it into your style? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 10. Fashion Icons Fashion Icons as Emma walked into her fashion history class, she knew she was in for a treat. Today's lecture was all about fashion icons and their influence on the industry. As the professor started the lecture, Emma eagerly took out her notebook. The first icon the professor introduced was Audrey Hepburn. Emma had always been a fan of the actress and was excited to learn more about her style. The professor explained that Audrey was known for her timeless style, characterized by clean lines, simple silhouettes, and bold accessories. Emma admired Audrey's ability to incorporate both elegance and playfulness into her looks. Next, the class learned about Coco Chanel, the fashion designer who revolutionized women's fashion by creating the little black dress and popularizing the concept of comfortable and functional clothing for women. 
Emma was fascinated by Chanel's ability to incorporate elements of men's fashion into her designs, creating a new standard of femininity. The professor also introduced the class to Diana Ross, the legendary singer and style icon. Emma had seen pictures of Ross performing and knew she had a unique sense of style. The professor explained that Ross was known for her bold, glamorous look, often incorporating feathers and sequins into her stage costumes. Emma admired how Ross used fashion to express her individuality and celebrate her African-American heritage. As the lecture continued, Emma realized that these fashion icons were more than just trendsetters. They represented a powerful message of self-expression and individuality in a world where conformity was often valued over creativity. Each icon had left a lasting impact on the fashion world, challenging traditional conceptions of style and beauty. As the class ended, Emma felt inspired to incorporate elements of these icons' styles into her own wardrobe. She thought about Audrey Hepburn's timeless elegance, Coco Chanel's functional femininity, and Diana Ross's bold glamour. She realized that fashion was not just about following trends, but about expressing oneself and celebrating individuality. Emma left the class feeling excited to explore her own personal style and incorporate elements of these fashion icons into her wardrobe. She knew that the true magic of fashion was not found in following the latest trend, but in creating a unique look that represented who she was as a person. Question, who are some fashion icons and what can you learn from them? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 11, Building Your Personal Style Samantha paused in front of her closet, feeling frustrated with the same old clothes staring back at her. She had always wanted to build a unique personal style, but had never quite known how to do it. As she pondered her situation, she remembered a chapter in her fashion book about building a personal style. She sat down with the book and began reading. The chapter emphasized the importance of identifying one's own taste and experimenting with different styles. Samantha realized that this was something she had never really done before. She tended to buy clothes that were in style, without necessarily considering if they looked good on her or reflected her personality. The book suggested finding inspiration for building a personal style through various sources, such as fashion blogs, magazines, and social media. Samantha was intrigued by the idea of following fashion bloggers and influencers who had unique and interesting styles. She decided to do some research and found a few bloggers she liked who had similar tastes to her. Samantha also realized that building a personal style required confidence and comfort. She had to be willing to step out of her comfort zone and try new things while still feeling confident and comfortable in what she was wearing. The book suggested starting with small changes such as adding a statement accessory or trying a different color palette. Armed with her newfound knowledge, Samantha was eager to start experimenting with her style. She decided to start small by buying a pair of boots in a different color than she usually wore. She also tried wearing a statement necklace with a simple dress, something she had never considered before. Over time, Samantha started to feel more confident in her ability to build her personal style. She continued to follow fashion bloggers for inspiration and tried different styles that she found interesting. She also learned to trust her instincts and not be afraid to take risks with her outfit choices. As Samantha's personal style continued to evolve, she realized that it was something that could never truly be finished. It was a journey of self-expression and self-discovery, and she was excited to see where it would take her. She learned that building a personal style wasn't just about clothes, but also about finding yourself and being true to who you are. In the end, Samantha realized that building a personal style wasn't about following rules or trends, but about creating a unique look that made her feel confident and comfortable. She felt empowered 
by her newfound ability to express herself through her clothes and was excited to continue on her journey of building her personal style. Question, how can you build your personal style?